Good morning. I'm uh, kind of in the book of Luke this morning, and uh, I bounced around a little bit as kind of went on a journey with the Lord this morning. Um, I'll tell you, I'm, I'm pondering this morning friends of mine that I know that have had encounters with the Lord, and they didn't last very long, but they were genuine encounters. I watched I watched them get touched by God, and and then before long, man, you'd never know it ever happened. And as I was reading this morning, I was in Luke 8, and Jesus is explaining to his disciples the parable of the seeds. And man, I, I, I could just see, I could see me in this too, because I luckily came through sometimes from the moment I came to the Lord. I I fell away in, in a bad way for about eight years where you couldn't tell that I'd ever had any encounter with the Lord at all. But this describes me for sure. I'm going to read it to you. The, the seeds that fell on the foot, footpath represent those who hear the message. I guess we should stop right there and say, what is the message? I'll tell you what, I'm going to go ahead a page. I'm going to come right back to that. Because Jesus says just one chapter later, if any of you want to be my follower, you must turn from your selfish ways. Take up your cross daily and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you'll lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. And what do you benefit if you gain the whole world, but you yourself are lost or destroyed? If anyone is ashamed of me and my message, the Son of Man will be ashamed of that person when he returns in his glory, in the glory of the Father and the holy angels. So it's turning from our selfish ways, taking up our cross daily and following Jesus. So we're going to bounce back. So the seeds that, all right, I'm going to back up one sentence. The seeds that fell on the footpath represent those who hear the message of turning from our selfish ways, taking up our cross and following Jesus, only to have the devil come and take it away from their hearts and prevent them from believing and being saved. The seeds on the rocky soil represent those who hear the message and receive it with joy, but since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, then fall away when they face temptation. Don't let anybody tell you you can't fall away. The Bible is so plain. You know, if I just bounce back one chapter. I went forward a chapter, now I bounce back. And it talks about when the Pharisees and the experts in religious law rejected God's plan for them, for they had refused John's baptism. John's baptism was a baptism of repentance. Jesus is still telling us we must turn from our selfish ways. That's repentance. So this has never changed. And when we turn our backs, all of our righteous deeds, it says in Ezekiel, if a righteous man lives his whole life righteously, then in the end of his life starts to do evil, all of his righteous deeds are forgotten. But if an evil man does evil all of his life and then turns from it and starts to live righteously, all of his evil deeds will be forgotten. Do you understand? This is spoken of from one end of your Bible to the other. All right. But since they don't have deep roots, they believe for a while, then they fall away when they face temptation. The seeds that fell among the thorns represent those who hear the message, but all too quickly the message is crowded out by the cares, riches, and pleasures of this life. And so they never grow into maturity. And the seeds that fell on the good soil represent honest, good-hearted people who hear God's word and cling to it and patiently produce a huge harvest. 
You know, Jesus talked about in the parable of the vine that if unless we remain in him, we can bear no fruit. And in the end, those useless vines are pruned away. They die and they're bundled and burned. But if we'll remain in him, the Father will trim on us, prune on us, so we bear much fruit. So our prayers this morning would be that the Lord would prune our vine, cut away anything in our life that's useless and unnecessary and doesn't aid in the producing of God's fruit in our life. You know, it says here, the cares, riches, and pleasures of this life are the things that war against us. That's why Jesus says, deny yourself, take up your cross, and follow me. He also said, it's harder for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God than for a camel to pass through a needle. But with God, all things are possible. I just wanted to, to, to let you see a little something this morning. I struggle with, uh, with things as well as you do, no doubt about it. I'm going to read you one last verse. It's in, uh, it's in Ephesians 5.27. It says, He, Jesus, gave up his life for her, the church, us, me, you, to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. We daily have to be in the word of God, letting it wash over us. It corrects us. It helps produce good doctrine in us. It keeps us on the path. There is a path everlasting that we must stay on that's highlighted by the word of God. He gives us the boundaries to this narrow path. God says, few be that ever find that path. He did this to present her, us, to himself as a glorious church without a spot or a wrinkle or any blemish. Instead, she will be holy and without fault. The Lord can bring you into his presence the day that you leave this earth without a spot or a wrinkle. He died to forgive you of all your sins and then to empower right living in you. Your responsibility from the day you say yes is to get on that narrow path, allow him to prune your vine, to lead you, guide you, correct you. When he corrects you, you repent. Repentance is a lifestyle. It's daily. That's how we end up in his presence spotless and without blemish. We don't continue in sin we allow God's word to determine in our life what is sin, what isn't. The Holy Spirit now is in us, working in us, leading us, guiding us, bringing to remembrance everything Jesus taught. It's got to start with this right here, though. Daily time with him. I love you guys. That's why I do this. I'm on the same path you are. It ain't easy. There's many days I'm crying out that the Lord would forgive me for what I just did that I knew I did. I willingly did it. And it felt bad. It don't feel good anymore. Any of those things that I used to do, I want to be spotless. I want to be clean. I want to turn from that sin. I don't like it anymore. Yet some days I do it anyway. We can't do that. We never know what day we leave this earth and we want to leave with a clean slate. I know I do. I love you guys. Bye-bye.